everybody, Jonathan here with another Vet Do It's 2024 video and I really hope you're enjoying the series so far where I've been looking at the top new features of Vet Do It's 2024. So we're going to carry on today looking at some of these big new features and as you see uh, from my previous videos we've already covered things like the new interface and I hope you're enjoying that new interface if you're a 2024 user already. I'm certainly getting used to it now and I've found some really good benefits for sure. The second thing that I've already started to enjoy on real projects is these huge improvements in shaded rendering and the camera effects as well. So make sure you check out my video on that too. And finally, the most recent video, I was absolutely blown away by the speed of the rendered sections. And while you know I did some testing, they seemed really fast and definitely using less memory. So all extremely exciting. Finally, uh, one of my favorite new features was, of course, the viewport styles. And this is something I'll be doing a lot more testing of uh, very recently. And I will be creating some amazing styles that you can perhaps share as well. So make sure you subscribe for those. Okay, so for today's video, we're going to carry on uh, looking at these features. Now, this one is not one that I can probably show you live, but I just want to talk about project sharing. So basically, project sharing in Vetworks is an amazing feature if you're working in a team. So if you're working in a team of people, you want multiple people working on the same physical Vectorworks project, uh, it's been around for a few years and project sharing will allow you to do that. Now, according to the latest version, project sharing plus means that we've kind of had a look at vet project sharing and basic Vectorworks have basically written more code and really kind of overhauled the way this works. Um, I always found project sharing pretty reliable but I have heard there was some issues with updating on certain hardware or maybe internet connections as well. But basically now it seems like this is going to be super reliable. And if it's not something you've looked at already, I would definitely recommend it. The other really nice thing about project sharing is something that you can turn on and off again as required. So if you would like some guidance on training for project sharing, of course, reach out to me and I'll be happy to do some online training for you and your team. Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about in this particular feature is one of my sort of favorite 3D modeling features is the new 3D dragger. I'm going to do a little example of how this would work and show you some really cool 3D tools along the way as well. And then we'll come back and look at some of the other new features too. So let's just jump into this first one and I hope you enjoyed the video and very much thanks for watching. So let's go for it. Okay, so the very first thing I'm going to do to show you how this new 3D dragger works is basically let's turn my page boundary on. I'm going to go to my 3D modeling tools and I'm going to get my NURBS curve. Now, if you know what NURBS stands for, I always say you're a bit of a nerd. Okay, so for those of you who don't know, let's find out. Non uniform rational B spline. So now you're officially a nerd like me with that to works too. So basically it means a curve that can curve in more than one direction, not just on plan, but also in elevation. So for example, if I wanted, I could double click and you could see I could start to move that curve up. What I'm actually keen to do here though, is basically I'm just gonna duplicate this curve. Okay, so I'm gonna hold down my Alt key and drag off another copy of this. Let's get my selection tool. And I'm basically gonna bring that up say three meters and hold down the Alt key to duplicate. So I've got these two curves and you can see. Now the next thing I want to do before we get into this example is go to the loft tool and what this enables me to do is loft two curves or more, many more together and click tick. Now this will create a NURB surface and you can see it's just really a bit like an extrude but it's a NURB surface. Okay so here's where things get interesting. If I double click now you'll see that I get the handles that I can actually select. So basically I can select the handle and now we can see the new 3D dragger, which is super nice. So it means that I can just drag this up in real time and kind of position it where I want to. Let's just move around here. Let's take another vertex here and we'll lower this one down. And I think we'll get this one. If you want to select multiples, you just drag them both and you can see I'm able to kind of drag both of those down at the same time. So that's moving in the, uh, the, the sort of Z direction, if you like. And obviously all of that can be tabbed in. Let's also uh, go and select a vertex here and just sort of see how I can actually move it. And you notice the distance there. So if I did want to, I could go tab minus 1M. So I can be really accurate with this if I want to. Okay, and let's take a vertex here and move it forward a bit. Let's go forward one meter. Okay, 
So if we have a quick look at this shape now, you'll see it's doing something quite complex architecturally in terms of sort of leaning and changing in all different directions. So that's really where NURBS Curves comes in. Okay, so the new 3D Dragger is pretty amazing in that basically what you can also do is you can kind of use these widgets up here to anchor and also do things like translate and rotate as well. So it means that you can actually move the dragger if you do want to for some reason. You'll see that I can actually rotate and then move in a slightly different direction. So this really does enable a huge amount of flexibility for modeling really complex organic forms. Okay, so that's cool. This is definitely a really nice new feature and I think the new 3D Dragger is something that you'll really get used to. Uh, have a look at the different modes up here and basically we'll do a bit more tutorial on that later as well. So now what I want to do is go to my Shell Solid tool. Now what the Shell Solid tool does is enable me to create a thickness. So with a single click, you'll notice that I've now created a really nice sort of thick wall, for example, for an architectural project. And I guess if I wanted to, I could just go and put some concrete on there. So let's type in the word concrete and we'll search. Just make sure you're looking for the right thing. So we'll go to textures. And I really like the uh, sort of new improvements into the resource manager. Um, these previews have got a lot bigger. Okay, so if I drag this out, you'll see, get a really nice big preview. That was always a bit small before. In fact, I just want to see something. Yeah, there, doesn't, there is a bit of a limit, but it gets pretty big. It was definitely uh, a bit small before. So now we can actually sort of read these textures. So I can drag and drop to apply my texture onto that surface. If it is a cloud-based texture like these are, um, there'll be a small delay while it just downloads and then you can basically add it to your surface. Okay, so that's pretty cool. It's looking good already. Now, what if I wanted um, some glazing here? Okay, so this isn't necessarily a new feature, but it's one that I can't resist to show you to learn a bit about 3D modeling and how amazing Vectorworks is. So I'm going to go on to uh, one of my favorite tools, the extracting tool. And the key with this tool is just to go up to the settings and if you can extract a planar object, and now in this case, it won't be planar because it's curving in all directions, but do tick this for the future. And then we go to extract surface mode and you'll notice that I can now click and tick. And I've extracted a NURBS curve, which if I give it a different color, you kind of just about see that curve. Now there's a bit of Z fighting going on right now and that's uh, where the surfaces are completely aligned vertically or in one plane. So that's what Z fighting is. Uh, the fight surfaces are fighting each other so they don't read clearly. But don't worry too much about that right now. So now I'm going to do a really cool thing that you may never have seen in Vectorworks called Surface Array and it's a modeling command here. Um, so to do this, I'm just gonna basically pop down into my previous layer and I'm going to basically draw a shape. So I'm gonna double click for on my rectangle tool and type in one meter by one meter. I'm just gonna draw a little kind of window if you like. And we'll use the offset tool and just offset inside 50 mil. And here, little tip here is I'm gonna right click and clip surface. Okay, and now I'm going to do some extruding. So let's extrude, let's say uh, 20 mil for the glass. Okay, and let's just go and put that into a glazing class. So we'll go new glazing. It's a really good idea to class things up as you go. Okay, so we'll edit the properties of that glass and let's go use it creation and search for some glazing. Now it's really nice, there's one I've found already, I was messing around with, so that's good. So that will apply that material and it will go transparent. Now let's extrude the uh, other bit, say 50 mil, and I'll just give this a darker gray color. Okay, we're ready. So I will take my uh, profile, if you like, and select my NURBS curve. Now watch this, this is pretty amazing. If you go up to the model menu, you can create a surface array. Okay, and with the surface array, it's a bit like duplicating along a path, but we're duplicating along a surface instead. So we can basically go through and type in the number of repetitions. Let's say we want uh, I'll go six there, and probably quite a few, like 20 in that horizontal. Now, there we go. You can see it's now duplicated the surface array. What I'll do is I'll turn off the base surface Okay, and you can see that we don't really need that base pink surface anymore. So this is really nice in terms of modeling. And all I need to do now maybe is make this a little bit smaller, let's say 250, uh, just to bring it slightly inside, just to kind of get that nice sort of cladding system, if you like, or, you know, 
if I removed it altogether, that would make a really nice glazed curtain wall, wouldn't it? Now, the brilliant thing about the uh, surface array tool is you can just in keep increasing the number of repetitions. You can see, and if I go, let's go a few more this way, let's go 10 that way as well. Basically, it just kind of keeps getting a bit smoother and smoother. And one final little tip that I would give you, okay, is let me just paste in my original shape. If you then uh, double click, you can edit the features or you can edit the solid. Sorry, if I double click onto the surface array rather, I can edit the base surface. Okay, and if I click into the base surface, you would actually be able to sort of edit this um, surface in some ways if you wanted and sort of trim it and so on. But what I'm actually keen to do is do the opposite. So I'm going to edit the array item and I'm just going to do something here. So let's just sort of say we decide to rotate it 45 degrees. Let me just select that and we'll click R. Let's go to my rotate tool. So now let's go to my rotate tool and let's just rotate that around so it's sort of diagonal. Now I'm keen also to do one other thing. When you do deform things like extrusions, it's a good idea to convert them potentially to mesh. And what that means is uh, the surface array will be a lot smoother. Okay, so let's see how that looks. In fact, I might just get the other extrude as well. I can select that in plan. Let's send that to back. And I think I've got my other extrude there. Okay, so not a bad thing to do. If you're finished editing, just convert them to a mesh. And let's see how that looks as the array item now gets duplicated around that rather complex path. So you can see you get a completely different sort of scenario. Again, if I remove the back wall with that nice sort of triangulation there, it looks really, really cool. But brilliant, the surface array is just one of those incredibly powerful commands for three-dimensional modeling. Now combined with the new 3D dragger um, and the ability for me to basically go into my surface and just sort of keep working on, you know, this sort of wall here, if you like, if you want to change the heights here. So let me just sort of keep working on this 3D dragger. Yep, okay, so we've made some changes. So when I click exit, that shell will become exited. And okay, I could easily also re-extract the surface and do the surface array. Okay, so if you haven't seen my other videos on modeling complex forms, dig deep into my channel and you'll find a whole series of videos on this. And of course, please reach out to me for some one-to-one -one or bespoke group training for you and your practice. So let's have a look at the next new feature together. So the next big feature I want to talk about is a really useful one for people collaborating with other people using Excel. Um, we now have Excel referencing built into Vectorworks. And you'll believe it or not, this is actually a two-way street where if you update the Excel spreadsheet in Vectorworks, it will also update in the Excel document as well. So I'm going to see if I can demo this for you, but there's a really nice little video you can also watch here on the Vectorworks website. Let me go for this, see if I can do a little demo. Okay, so let's hop into Vectorworks. And at the moment, I've just got a sheet layer. Um, you can reference basically onto a design layer or a sheet layer. So I'm going to go for it and go File, Import, and I go to Worksheet. Now I have noticed the drag and drop doesn't actually work for Excel files, but it works for pretty much every other file type. So don't try and drag and drop this one, but go to File, Import, Worksheet. So I've actually sort of did a little quick search for basic some Excel documents, and I found a few sort of standard ones. Now here's a really nice one for Velfac UK Windows. So let's go for it and click Open. Now you notice we've now got the uh, file sort of importing and if there were different sort of sheets in there you can actually select either one. So these are the different tabs in the Excel spreadsheet. But the main new thing here is the ability to reference and basically update that file. So let's click OK and basically just wait for it to process. This will import the Excel spreadsheet into Vectorworks worksheet and really nice so now I can just say a worksheet on drawing now if I close that down for a second, you can see here's our spreadsheet. Uh, it's quite big, so let's just sort of reformat it so it fits our page. And you can basically see the kind of data that we've got in there. So if I zoom in a bit here, all of the data is intact. Now what's really nice is, you'll notice now if you go to the referencing tab, here is the file that's been referenced in, and here was a previous one that I played with earlier. So let's say that I decide to go and open that document itself in um, Excel. Now, I don't actually use Excel. I've got numbers, so I'm keen to see how this will work. But I should be able to replicate. 
So if I open that document in Excel, and so what we'll do, we'll go make something uh, really obvious, a real major change. Let's just delete this sort of LFAC out of a couple of these cells here. And obviously I could change anything else in here as well. So if I save this document, it won't actually save the Excel because I'm using uh, numbers on Mac. However, if I just go to export, and notice I can just export the Excel document, click next, and basically let's just overwrite that Excel document there. That was it. So that should replicate uh, the fact that it's been updated and saved in Excel, even though, as I say, I'm on a Mac. So let's go for it. So if I now go to my Valfac and right click and click update, hopefully it brings in and you can see that new change has come through absolutely fantastically. Okay, so that's the first thing. Um, the second thing is, let's just open this out and make a change the other way. So I'm going to hold down the Alt key and just sort of scroll in so you can actually kind of see my worksheet. That's a really nice little tip. Um, hold down the Alt key and scroll in and out to make those a bit clearer. Okay, so let's go and do a few other changes. Um, so now I'm actually going to delete in Vectorworks. And you'll notice that when you do this change, you do have the option to break the reference or basically you can push the changes back to Excel. So push those data changes that you're making directly in Vectorworks back to the Excel document. And that is pretty awesome. So let's do a few more. Okay, so here I've got my worksheet open in Vectorworks. And basically I'm just gonna paste in some additional changes here. Now what I realized is it doesn't update automatically. What you do is you go file and you click push data to Excel file. Okay, so these changes will now be visible in the Excel file when you open it next. So that's really amazing. Okay, so now let's do the true test. Let me go through to my document and here is that file. It looks like it's been updated at the correct time. So if I drag that down into numbers again, and if I go here, look at that, these changes have now come through fantastically. So absolutely love this sort of two-way spreadsheeting. So I recommend this is a super feature and I think it's one that's gonna make Excel and Vectorworks workflow work really, really streamlined. Let me know what you think in the comments. I'll be very pleased to see if this is a feature that you've been wanting. It's certainly one that I've needed over the years and this will make it a lot easier. Great, so let's move on to the next new feature. I hope you've enjoyed the two new features so far. Now, I've realized the video is getting a little bit long, so I'm gonna take a look at this uh, feature in another video once I've had a good chance to explore it in detail. But reading about the DWG import export optimizations, this is always very welcome. Uh, we always need to work in a world with Vectorworks when we're collaborating with other consultants, and this will make even easier collaboration just by making much more streamlined and uh, kind of efficient files. So I'm looking forward to explore that with you on the next videos in the future. But if you are new around here, make sure you do subscribe, put that bell on so you don't miss any future videos. And I look forward to seeing you in the next ones. Please reach out to me if I can help with any advice on Vectorwitz licensing or any Vectorwitz training wherever you are, particularly in the UK and Ireland as well. Thanks for watching everybody and see you next time. Bye bye.